This video is for educational purposes only. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to the channel. Here we go. I don't think you understand how crazy this is. Yes, we're gonna talk about it. Sure, it was funny for a second. This is just getting weird now. She's one of the most popular people in the world right now for saying two words, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just ask in the comments. But before she made social media and before she made all of her merch and everything, she laid low for a little bit, and then she came out with a team of lawyers and managers. And just a few days ago, she released her Instagram, which has over a million followers and over a hundred million views. And all of her posts are of someone recording her, of her going to concerts, selling merch, being interviewed and one of the only questions she answered was if she was an industry plant. I'm not an industry plant. It was not planned. Every bit of it was just there right in the moment because I had to ask what that meant. So <laughs> that's false. I mean, no one was thinking that at first, but now you have never seen a video be pushed out like that in your whole entire life. This is probably one of the quickest rises to fame that we have ever seen. Now she is reportedly going to LA slash New York to take on her influencer lifestyle and make reality TV shows and join podcasts and the whole nine yards. Keep in mind, this is all over two words. Can someone smarter than me explain to me uh, like how to spot the difference between inflation and just corporations raising their prices because they think they can make more money? Because honestly, and this is me showing my own ignorance and bias, it just feels like businesses are raising their prices and then being like, ah, oh, it's, the, it's the economy, it's the president, it's the inflation. Butterfly flaps its wings in Peking and now milk is $9. To me, as a layman, it seems like they're just trying to make more money and not seem like the jerk in the situation. You know what I mean? Because I was thinking about the casual dining industry and how they insist that like millennials and Gen Z have ruined it as like as like a business. But to me, the reason why the whole business worked is because, you know, you were providing eight dollar hamburgers and five dollar beers. And now you provide seventeen dollar hamburgers and twelve dollar beers. So you raise the prices. But at that price point, it doesn't feel like a casual dining experience anymore in the way it was. So less people are going. So what you needed to do now is raise prices to compensate for the fact that less people are going so that you could still make your profits. But that's not inflation, right? You raising your prices so that less people buy it and then you having to raise your prices again to compensate for less people buying it, that's, that's not inflation, is it? Because that to me sounds like your fault. Inflation to me sounds like environmental, something like a business can't control. I'm happy to listen if you're not a jerk about it. This is the right spot. Look at this. This area is filled with books about pretend people. That's right, Grover. This is the fiction section. Fiction means it's a made-up story. Oh, hey, Elmo, I bet we can find your Galactic Gale comic book here. That's what Elmo thought so. <laughs> hey, Grover, this is the fiction section. Fiction means it's a made-up story. I He's should have known. Carpet the good in all of us. Fiction means it's a made-up story. I would have never fallen for that. Everyone knows about that scam. What were you thinking? This is the fiction section. Fiction means it's a made-up story. Cat fished. Oh, now it seems so obvious. To yes, 100% agree. <laughs> I just they run out of anecdotes, you know, yeah. and they and uh, and they just start making stuff up. Yeah. Like that Neil Armstrong guy. Have you seen him on the talk shows? Neil Armstrong. You mean the first man to walk in the moon? Talk about a fish story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, and they're buying it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If I say I don't like fat girls, they're gonna try to cancel me. If you say I don't like short men, no one's gonna care. Right. Versus a fat girl can control her weight, but a man can't control his height. Correct. Hey everyone. Do y'all know this guy right here in the t-shirt with the green tube? All right, get your fucking tea ready because we need the FBI. The TikTok FBI. The T Talk FBI. This is our guy right here. Why are we looking for him? Glad you asked. 
I don't know who he is, but he is here in Helen, Georgia. He was here yesterday on July 4th, 2024, and he was here today, July 5th, 2024. And you see what is what he's doing. He has grabbed so many children out of the water. He has saved them from being separated from the parents, from drowning, from being run over by other tubes. And I just want to bring his attention to him and give him a shout out. If anyone knows him, please, 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 please tag him. I want him to see this. I want him to know that we see him and we recognize his efforts and what he did today. And we appreciate him. And if there's anyone out there that knows his name, please, please, please let us know what his name is. He was here yesterday at the Hellendorf, right in front of the Hellendorf where the rural Raging River is. And he was... He was here yesterday. He was here today. He spent hours out there helping people. Here's a better look at our guy. Here's another more gooder look at our guy. This is our guy now. We appreciate you, bro. As a father, I know how much it freaks me out having my kids out in the moving water like this. I got five kids, and I'm always freaked out. Where are they at? So knowing I got good people out here who help in other parents, uh, keep an eye on these kids, keeping an eye on each other. It takes a village. So find this guy, tag him. I like to send him some tea, maybe some tea mugs, maybe some merchandise. But most importantly, I like to send him a thank you. Do your thing, Internet. My brain is broken and now I'm nauseous. This person says, every time I look at the mystery gang, I have this visceral feeling that someone is missing, but nobody ever is. Who are they? What happened to them? Then someone goes, logically, I know this is them. These are the only people in the mystery gang, Fred, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby. That's the five of them, but something deep within my lizard brain is telling me there's a sixth member that has been, for unknown reasons, banished from this timeline and our collective memory as a species. So at first I was like, I love Scooby-Doo. These are the only characters. But then I looked at the picture and I got this like sinking, nauseating <laughs> feeling that something's wrong. And now I'm like, do I actually think that there's something wrong or is the power of suggestion very, very good and these people saying this like implanted the idea in my head and now I feel like that it's true. A couple of the comments were like, the mystery machine not being in the background feels wrong. Some people were like, oh, maybe you're thinking of Scrappy-Doo. Or maybe it's because there's only five of them so it's like not an even number and there's no one really for Velma to pair up with. But now I'm thinking, why did they do that? Why does everybody have a pair except for Velma? Currently, I am dealing with the harsh reality that a heightened level of one's consciousness often leads to increased levels of isolation. And it's not that the emotionally intelligent or those who we would deem to be spiritually aware desire aloneness because most of us don't. It's just the unfortunate result of an unwillingness to regress to a lower state or a lessened moral behavior for the sake of fellowship. In other words, I'm not about to act a fool, put up with abuse, endure what I don't enjoy, or do something out of character just to say I'm not alone. With a greater understanding of one's individual value comes a lesser tolerance for being devalued, unappreciated, undervalued, or disrespected. Those who improve themselves remove themselves from any environment that doesn't appreciate their presence. Because it takes so much work to get to a place of esteem and confidence to where as you see yourself as valuable. So when you sense any regression around you, you want no part of that. It's the simplicity of the realization that the more I love God, the more I love myself. The more I love myself, the more I love others. But if I devalue myself, then my treatment toward others will become questionable. So I have to guard how I value myself. When your thinking elevates to that level, you then realize that the reciprocation for poor treatment is not poor treatment. The reciprocation for poor treatment is absence. Imbalance leads to collapse and that which is uneven can never be equal. So why give ample energy to someone who's only offering minimal effort to you? Proximity, protection, and emotional boundaries are just a part of being relationally intelligent. You're doing it for your own betterment so that you can not only love you, but you can efficiently and effectively love others. Shoes and food. You're telling me for 40 years I should have been cleaning my wood with what? <laughs> Ain't no way. You can take old, nasty wood and spray it with chlorine and and it'll look pretty much brand new. Let's give it a shot. I stopped by the store and got a jug of pool chlorine. Put about half this jug in. And then fill the rest of it up with water, spray it on your wood, and in almost no time, it looks brand new. All right, now you can probably see 
these little stairs that, that I built for that baby slide about 40 years ago. It, they are old and nasty. So let's spray this on there and see if it does anything to them. <laughs> it's almost immediate. Let's see what it looks like after, after it dries. Are y'all ready for the reveal? I, if you can tell, I'm a lot cleaner too. I poured some of that <laughs> chlorinating pool cleaner on me. <laughs> no, I didn't really. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Y'all are not ready for this one. So, a lot of deep sea creatures are red. But since the color blends in so well with the water, sometimes it looks dark blue or black. Now combine that with a horn-like crown, submerged home, and a trident, Poseidon is just another name for the devil. Now hear me out on this. What if humans are just misinterpreting an underground tavern of fire, a boiling sea floor with hydrothermal vents, and exposed magma? And I did some research, and this guy named Dante, he describes the ninth circle of hell, a place where traitors are crushed in a dark frozen lake. So that sounds like deep sea trenches or brine pools. Now think about this. Sailors used to call mermaids sea demons. Think about it. McDonald's has been hiding some big fat lies to keep people addicted. But after you watch this, I hope you'll not be fooled anymore. Because in this video, you'll finally know the surprisingly shady answers to why the french fries, coke, and Sprite taste so different at McDonald's. Everyone knows that McDonald's Sprite tastes way better than just ordinary Sprite. Why is it so good? Right? Why their ice cream machine is almost always broken. Can I just get one vanilla ice cream cone? Just and finally, what creepy psychological trick is hidden in the McDonald's logo? <sighs> I love McDonald's. Ba -bum. These are the five dark secrets that McDonald's doesn't want you to know. McDonald's even sell real food. Mold on my fish boy sandwich. That's disgusting. Number one, fries loaded with chemical. You'd think that the signature McDonald's french fries only had one ingredient, potatoes, right? But no, since this fast food giant has to keep you craving for more, they've got 10. Potatoes, natural beef flavor, and eight of those are inside. Basically, a lot of chemicals. And that explains why McDonald's fries taste so different. And this is probably the worst food you could possibly eat with tons of chemical ingredients. But it's with natural beef flavor where the deception comes in. A medium fry. It's really a large fry. See, in the 50s, McDonald's used beef fat to keep their fries extra flavorful. But when health advocates criticized how unhealthy it was, McDonald's started using vegetable oil with natural beef flavor to keep the meaty taste. And that natural beef flavor contains milk, making McDonald's french fries not vegan. Vegan or not though, there's another substance outside of the 10 ingredients that should really scare you. Acrylamide. It's present in any starchy food that's fried for too long. And the longer it's fried for, the greater the chance for you to get cancer. Are you still hungry? I'm not tasting much potato. It's giving more artificial preservatives. Number two, modified Coke and Sprite. Have you ever wondered why soft drinks at McDonald's just hit different? Like their soft drinks have some kind of magic. Why is it spicy? Well, that's because of McDonald's loyalty. Not to you though, but to another food business giant, Coca-Cola. Yes, since the 50s when they have both grown helping each other, Coca-Cola has been contractually bound to pretty much give McDonald's special treatment. It cannot sell its soda syrup to other restaurants for less than what McDonald's pays. And why 
While other restaurants get their soda syrups in cheap plastic bags, McDonald's gets their Coke syrup in stainless steel tanks. These containers keep the liquid as chilled as possible, keeping the perfect fizz of the soda. And McDonald's grand plan to keep you hooked doesn't stop there, of course. They even calculate the syrup to ice ratio to ensure that when the ice melts in your Coke drink, your Coca-Cola stays addictingly sweet. Because of course, they added extra syrup to it. I mean, even the size of the straws matters. McDonald's straws are wider than usual. And this change actually makes all the difference when the fizz hits your tank. It's a weird mouthfeel thing, right? Yeah. Where having more fluid Hitting my mouth faster is more satisfying. Number three, the Mac rib is not even a rib. McDonald's is literally lying to our faces. Mac rib is not even made of actual pork ribs. In reality, it's just chunks of pig innards, pig shoulder, cow stomach, and other pork parts combined, formed into the shape of ribs through a grinder, mixed with salt, dextrose, and a bunch of preservatives, and then served with barbecue sauce bread to look acceptable what is in there oh there's white flex ah i ate that ew it's honestly McGross. Turns out McDonald's has been pushing this on the menu even if not that many people really want to order it so they can keep earning from this item when there's a chicken shortage. It is the farewell tour for the McRib. Number four, the McDonald's logo has a creepy psychological trick. I'm getting back and I really don't know why. They actually thought about getting rid of its iconic golden arches back in the 60s but when they consulted with a psychologist named Louis Cheskin, he advised McDonald's to keep the big M. Are you ready to hear why? Because supposedly the design symbolizes a mother's nourishing chest, subconsciously making hungry customers feel comforted. This is not very tasteful, especially considering the fact that McDonald's has cleverly targeted children in its marketing. From its playgrounds to colorful restaurants to happy meals, successfully establishing brand loyalty from an early age. And there's just something so disgusting about it. Using the nourishing love of mothers to promote unhealthy fast food and then market it to kids. McDonald's is one of the most disgusting companies in the world and I don't understand why people support them. Why would you go there? Stop eating this stuff. Number five, the broken ice cream machine conspiracy. Can we get two ice creams, please? No, my thing is broken. There are three possible reasons why McDonald's ice cream machine is almost always unavailable. And all of them will disappoint you. First is that some employees admitted they're simply too lazy to clean it, given it's an 11 step process that requires removing 7 different parts and over 20 O-rings. Second is that the automated pasteurization process literally takes 4 hours long and with one mistake it can take yet another 4 hours, making the machine unavailable for the whole day. And third, well listen closely because this one's quite juicy. There's a theory that broken ice cream machines are very good news for the business that made them. Taylor. In fact, there's even a lawsuit alleging that Taylor charges high fees for maintaining those machines and demands that only its own technicians can repair them. No wonder Taylor makes 25% of its revenue just from fixing those machines. If true, it's a multi-million dollar racket. Right now, 11.85% of all McDonald's ice cream machines are currently broken. McDonald's ice cream machines are always broken on purpose. Wow. It's truly mind-blowing how far a company can go, how obsessively calculated its methods could be, just to keep you craving their unhealthy food, while their pockets only get fatter and fatter, while potentially killing millions of people all around the world. It's disgusting. I could barely breathe, that was amazing. 
At the end of the day, Night Fam, I don't need you to boycott McDonald's for me. I cannot control your choices. And by the way, all the food you see here will be given away, so none of it will go to waste. I didn't just buy it to throw it away. But the next time you order that Big Mac and Coke, remember the dark secrets we just exposed in this video. And realize that if a food company was so desperate to use those crazy methods just to keep you hooked, then it it was never really thinking about what's good for you. Hey, if you're still here, please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button so this will get recommended to other people. Thanks. That is only dangerous because of men, which is true. Statistically, yeah. violence, men. Well, that isn't true. <laughs> Let's get to the root cause of things. Manipulation happens when you focus on the effects and you don't go to the calls. So the root of it is that without a man and you were just here, you would have been eaten by a lion, a tiger and bear. And guess what? If the lions and tigers and bears didn't get you, you wouldn't have the ability to gather enough calories for you to last. Cause a woman can't manipulate the world how a man can. So let me explain to you how a world would operate with only women and only men. When men get together, we know, oh, he's stronger here. He has this skill here. He got this. Let the best person work this skill. And that creates a hierarchy from top down. When a women get together what you think about you're all emotional so you're tiptoeing all the time and you're looking at the sensitivity levels in this woman and that woman because you know that you are sensitive so what you do is you start looking at everything in an egalitarian sense to equalize everything you yeah. get two you get two you get two you get two the men don't operate like that did you do enough to get two if you ain't do enough, you're not getting to. You mm -hmm. get zero. Put in that work and then you get that. Mm -hmm. This is why on the survival series, men, they was cleaning water fast, building fires fast because they created that hierarchy. They put the best person in position first. The women, they was trying to do everything equal and by committee. So they couldn't create any order and any structure. The world wouldn't be safer without men. Nature killed more people than any wars and anything you can never imagine. And men, we built infrastructure to protect the women from nature. The thing about IQ is it's mostly just pattern recognition. Now we define that as intelligence because it's one of the main things our brain is actually for. We scan our environment for recognizable patterns because patterns mean reliability and predictability and that means safety. And the ability to distinguish safety from danger is one of the main reasons our species survived for long enough to become human beings in the first place. The thing is that that doesn't necessarily lead to insight or wisdom because pattern recognition is a lot more about calculating risk than it is about understanding truth. And it's also why we're afraid of the dark, the weird, the bizarre and the unknown. Because if we can't recognize a pattern, then our subconscious mind warns us that danger might be afoot and our self-preservation instincts kick into high gear. It's also why we wear these masks, these personas and think of them as ourselves. My name is this, my ideology is that, I identify thusly. It's to give people a predictable and reliable pattern to interpret us through, because if we present as fluid and abstract, they'll think that we're dangerous and crazy. But that is where most human progress comes from, not just intellectual prowess, the ability to recognize the patterns, but intellectual courage, the willingness to confront the unknown. I keep seeing um, videos on TikTok. If you say a certain thing that the dogs go crazy. So I'm going to try it with my dogs. Uga. Uga. Uga.
feel like having a goose in your house is way more practical than having like a guard dog. A guard dog can be tricked, meat or food or something like that, but a goose is never going to stop honking. If I was robbing your house and I saw a goose in your living room, I'm not going in your house because I don't know what other weird things you're doing. You got a goose in your living room. I'm going to have to take care of the goose. You can't just kind of fight a goose. You're going to have to kill the goose. And everybody's going to hear you killing the goose. It's not going to be quiet. There's going to be feathers all over the place. There's going to be a lot of evidence that a goose was murked. You're not going to be able to sneak upstairs if there was a goose in the dining room. The goose going to hear you. And the goose going to come at you. I don't care if there's 12 people robbing your house. The goose is coming at you. There's no way you come across a goose and don't nobody say, it's a motherfucking goose in here. Somebody's going to be verbal. You can whisper, yo, there's a dog. But ain't nobody going to whisper, yo, there's a goose. Also, if if I'm your neighbor and I hear your dog barking, I'm going to be like, damn, man, his dog always be barking. I just want the dog to start barking. But if I hear the goose going crazy, I'm calling the cops because I'm like, it's a goose going crazy next door. And either y'all come out here and shoot this some bitch or I'm going to do it. I can't listen to a goose go crazy for more than 13 seconds. I'm not used to that honk a goose can also fly with a dog you really only got to worry about his mouth but with a goose you got to worry about like both wings both feet the neck the head the honks yes a goose is going to be easier to kill than a dog but it's it's going to be harder to catch you see what i'm saying there's not a lot of people who have uh, a lot of practice catching a, a goose you got to catch and defend a goose ain't gonna give up it's not a point where a goose is going to stop trying to fight you. And it's not trying to fight you because it cares about the inhabitants of the of the dwelling that you that you rob. And goose is just on demon time from Jump Street. They're just like, I'll, I'll give it really up to anybody. I don't care. I don't even care. If they did kill the goose, at least, you know, you could eat the goose. You know what I mean? You're like, damn, they killed my goose. Hey, we should melt some butter, though. It's a win-win is what I'm trying to say. Get you a goose. I hate geese. I can't stand geese. Basically, they're just bitch ducks to me. They make good guard animals. When society collapsed, the librarians didn't. They knew what information people were looking for. So, with whatever resources were available, they started making manuals. With accurate citations. First aid and hygiene, water purification, gardening, foraging and herbalism, trapping and fishing, home heating. Then, as time passed, tool library, classes, notice board, seed cache, and sometimes hot tea. It became a real local hub for the community, and people usually respected the space, at least more than most buildings. Anne had a particularly green thumb, so she started growing a bunch of mango seedlings early, so they will be sooner ready to sprout and be part of a survival garden starter packs, which also includes seedlings or seeds for berry bushes, herbs including medicinal, cooking, and pollinator attractors ground cover like strawberries and clover, and flowers that can return nitrogen to the soil. She gave them away to anyone, but also planted them when going on book scavenging trips. So if you need information, just head towards where the mango trees get denser, and you'll find the librarians. I'm gonna bet you didn't know these facts. Alice Cooper used to babysit Keanu Reeves. The word Riz was Oxford's word of the year for 2023, beating the words Swifty, Situationship, and De-Influencing. Famous torrenting website, The Pirate Bay, tried to purchase an island in hopes of making it their own country with no copyright law. In the 1990s, the U.S. Air Force did research on creating a gay bomb, which is a non-lethal bomb containing very strong pheromones that would make the enemy's forces attracted to each other. The Filipino flag is flown with the red stripe up in times of war and the blue stripe up in times of peace. There is a rare type of tree called the dragon blood tree that contains red sap and appears to bleed when it's cut down. This 1953 painting sold at an auction for a whopping $43.8 million. Darth Vader is derived from Old Dutch, meaning Dark Father. Rap God by Eminem packs 1,560 words into a six minute, four second song, holding the world record for most words in a hit single. Schnapsity is the German word for a ridiculous idea that only sounds good when you're drunk. 12% of the world's total languages are found in Papua New Guinea, which has over 820 indigenous languages. There are more languages on this island 
island than in any other country. 27,000 trees are cut down every day to supply the world's toilet paper. The US Senate has only been directly elected since 1913. A 22-year-old Canadian man took it upon himself to fill potholes with the sign, I fill the potholes, pay me instead of your taxes. Drivers would give him cash, coffee, and joints for filling the potholes. You are less likely to die during an economic depression. This is mostly attributed to the cleaner air, reduced traffic, and fewer dollars spent on the vices like tobacco and alcohol. 90% of video game sales in the world are now digital. A December 2011 study revealed that around 92% of all baby changing stations in the United Kingdom had traces of cocaine on them. After Thomas Edison's declining health forced him into a wheelchair, his friend Henry Ford brought an extra wheelchair to his estate so that they could race them against each other. Around 35% of female prisoners in Saudi Arabia are still in prison because no male relative will come and collect them. A woman who successfully underwent a lung transplant went into anaphylactic shock after eating peanut butter. She learned that the 12 year old who donated the lungs had a peanut allergy and had died from anaphylactic shock. If you publish a book in Norway, the government will buy a thousand copies or even 1500 if it's a children's book and distribute them to libraries through the country. Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini were all nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize at one point in their lives. 23% of students students at the Mississippi University for Women are men. A survey found that 56% of commercial pilots admitted to sleeping while flying and 29% had woken up to find the other pilot asleep as well. James Buchanan is the only American president who was never married. A silent man in the UK repeatedly gets arrested for standing on certain roads to block traffic. He never speaks a word, not even to the court or his own lawyer. Every time he's released, he repeats the crime and remains completely silent. A bottle of coke has a pH scale of 2.8 and could dissolve a nail in just four days. A Brussels airline flight to Vienna was aborted because the pilot was attacked in the cockpit. The attacker was a passenger's cat. A certain type of box jellyfish's venom will make you feel a strong sense of anxiety and sense of impending doom, possibly the thoughts of suicide. These symptoms can last up to two weeks. Women's voices have deepened by 23 hertz over the past 50 years. There is a giant statue of Jesus in Poland that serves as a Wi-Fi antenna. Some cities in the U.S. used to have ugly laws, fining people $1 to $50 for their bad looks. The world's shortest escalator is located in Kawasaki, Japan. Russian soldiers were not always wearing socks until 2013. Play-Doh was originally sold and used as wallpaper cleaner. The world's oldest toy is thought to just be the stick. The longest nipple hair ever recorded was 17 centimeters long and belonged to a man in Italy. Until the early 19th century, Australia was best known as New Holland. The average person will spend a year of their life looking for misplaced items. It used to be common for men to wear high heels. The average American spends about 90% of their time indoors. Chewing gum is illegal in Singapore. Most people can hear the difference between hot and cold water when poured just by the sound it makes. Honey doesn't spoil. A diamond can grow inside of another diamond. 28% of delivery drivers have taken food from a customer's order. Deceased human bodies can be turned into electricity. The office chair with wheels was invented by Charles Darwin. Boanthropy is the physical disorder of someone who believes that they are a cow. Colgate used to sell candles. Blood makes a loop around your body 1,500 times a day. You are 14% more likely to die on your birthday than any other day of the year. There is a city called Batman in Turkey. The very first game of basketball was played with a football. 3.44 a.m. is the most common time to wake up in the middle of the night. Tim Horton died after crashing his car driving drunk and high. A frown means something different to many people around the world. A study at Florida State University discovered that playing Portal 2 is better for your brain than brain training games like Lumosity. A woman faked her entire tragedy and the loss of her husband during the 9-11 attacks and then became the president of the support network in New York. According to scientists, the weight of the average cumulus cloud is over a million pounds. Allodoxophobia is the fear of opinion. Arizona driver's licenses don't expire at all until you're 65. You then have to renew them in person every five years. Bill Gates' house was designed using a Mac. If you wake up during surgery, you most likely won't be able to tell anyone. 
During the Aztec reign, a slave could be bought for a hundred cocoa beans. Eight of the ten largest statues in the world are of Buddha. If you point your car keys to your head, it increases the remote signal range. All the fluids in your head act as a fantastic conductor, allowing you to extend the remote's range by a few car lengths. If your throat tickles, scratching your ear can make it go away. Q-tips were invented in 1923, originally called baby gaze, then Q-tip baby gaze, then finally just Q-tips. The Q stands for quality. When Weird Al was developing the Weird Al show, Seth MacFarlane pitched him an animated segment, which Al didn't end up going with. The segment was later developed into Family Guy. Bob Marley's last words were, money can't buy life. My drone is making me suspicious that we live in a simulation. I wanted to teach myself how to fly FPV drones. So I got a simulator and I sunk about 40 hours into it learning all the basics like flips, yaw spins, and how to land without crashing. And then I finally bought a drone. I'd only been flying in real life for a couple of days, but I was already dodging trees, flying over waterfalls, chasing frisbees, dive bombing my dad in the tractor. Then I had a moment. I realized how strange it was that I'd learned 100% of these skills from a simulator. It felt kind of like learning kung fu in the matrix. I gotta say, I am shocked by how normal this has become already. And everything's kind of like that these days. Everything's crazy and somehow normal. Like why wouldn't you think we live in a simulation? I can fly a drone like a dragonfly, I can 3D print toys for my kids out of thin air, I have regular conversations with an artificial intelligence. It actually feels like the programmers of this game keep pushing the limits and are taking bets on when one of us are finally going to wake up and be like, hey, this kind of feels like a game. Are there going to be millions of foreigners voting in our elections this fall? When you register to vote, election officials aren't doing any kind of check, they're not verifying the information, they're not making sure that you're actually a U.S. citizen. We have nothing in place really to stop that. A couple of years ago, the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania was forced to resign after it was revealed that the Pennsylvania DMV, since then, Pennsylvania a state government has fought to prevent having to disclose how many aliens were registered and how many of them voted, and it could be a lot more. And that's not a rumor, that's something that really happened. Those are facts. Adam and Eve had sex, so what's the big deal? Well, I didn't say that sex is the big deal. The big deal is whether or not you have what is considered virtue and honor. Who Men, cares about honor instance, in 10 years' time? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you, so if you want the answer. Yes, Karen. Other men are always going to see you as a cuck. Because they consider this to be low virtue, they're always going to consider you to be lesser than them, no matter how poor they are. The poorest man on this planet, who has a virtuous wife who is loyal to him, is always going to consider himself richer than any amount of money that you give yourself based on the fact that you let other men bone your chick. You have now told me multiple times the only thing which you value is money. Yes. After all, God's not going to feed you. He's not going to clothe you. He's no, not going to take care of you. He won't. Though there's almost every other thing on planet Earth you could do to make money. You took the easy path to make mm. money, and woman. you shared the one thing that men never share, which is their woman, in order to do it. That's okay. why all men everywhere will always consider you lesser than they are. From a distance, this marshmallow crop looks fine. But here's why us Canadian marshmallow farmers are in big trouble and why you should be concerned. The problem, sun and too much of it. So what? The marshmallows are a little toasted. You're gonna toast them anyway, you might be thinking. Well, let me show you why it's a problem. Bitter. Now many people, especially those that live in the city, do not know that we grow marshmallows in the field like this and that they can be exposed to the sun and the elements. And that is why it is now your job to let the city people know, to load up on marshmallows right now before they can't get their little mitts on them, before there's a 500, 600, 700% increase in marshmallows. Be a good neighbor, spread the word, tell the community. Right, I hope you enjoyed our session for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for showing up and I'll see you around.